Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we know that during the time of Lent, many, many of you have great devotion to the Stations of the Cross. I'm happy to let you know that in front of the main entrance of the Cathedral of the Good Shepherd, Victoria Street, we have 15 Stations of the Cross in the Garden of Resurrection. There are also 15 Stations of the Cross inside the main Cathedral Church. However, in this presentation, I'd like to walk you through the 15 Stations of the Cross. Come to this Cathedral when you can during the Lenten season. Have your personal devotion or bring your family and friends to make the Stations of the Cross, to be nourished by your faith and to be strengthened by the reality of God's compassionate love that He has shown us through this beautiful Stations of the Cross devotion that we have in our Catholic Church. I welcome you one and all, and I look forward to seeing all of you here. Stations of the Cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, if anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross every day and follow me. In a spirit of humility and penance, we want to walk with you on the road to Calvary. We are in need of forgiveness. We want to understand better your love for us. The way of the cross is the way of life. The cross must be carried today if we want to witness to your love. Help us to live your gospel, to live it to the end, unto the folly of the cross.
the first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. It was the day of preparation, about the sixth hour. Here is your king, said Pilate to the Jews. But they shouted, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king except Caesar. So Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, judge of the living and the dead, you accepted to be judged and condemned by sinful men. We bring to you the suffering of many innocent people who are undergoing unjust accusations and punishment. We ask you to forgive us when we commit injustice. Amen. The second station, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus was wounded for our rebellion, crushed because of our guilt. The punishment reconciling us fell on him, and we have been healed by his bruises. We had all gone astray like sheep, each taking his own way, and the Lord brought the acts of rebellion of all of us to bear on him. Ill-treated and afflicted, he never opened his mouth, like a lamb led to the slaughterhouse, like a sheep dumb before its shearers, he never opened his mouth. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have borne our infirmities and carried our sorrows. We bring to you the suffering of people in this world. Forgive us when we make others suffer. Grant us the grace to accept cheerfully the difficulties that come our way and to be ready to take up our cross every day and follow you. Amen. Sin has not the cross that you bear. Is the burden we all should share? Sin has not its own death. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed our world. Jesus emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, becoming as human beings are, and being in every way like a human being, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. And for this, God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Almighty God, you were crushed under the weight of the cross. We bring to you the sufferings of the sick and the oppressed. We ask you to forgive us when we indulge in luxury or become materialistic in our way of life. Amen. Jesus, we behold your first fall. Teach us that for us we freely fall. We should never give up all. The fourth station. Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Simon said to Mary, his mother, Look, he is destined for the fall and the rise of many in Israel, destined to be a sign that is opposed, and the sword will pierce your own soul too, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, your mother was with you on the way to Calvary, having a share in your sufferings. She is for us today an example of strength and fidelity. May we imitate her and follow you in happiness as well as in sorrows. She is our mother, always by our side. Amen. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus to carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As they were leading Jesus away, they seized the man, Simon from Cyrene, who was coming in from the country and made him shoulder the cross and carry it behind Jesus. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we needed the help of the man on the way to Calvary. We bring to you the crosses of those who are lonely and those rejected by society. Forgive us when we refuse to talk to people and keep too much to ourselves. Free us from selfishness and pride. Amen. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus had no form or charm to attract us, no beauty to win our hearts. He was despised, the lowest of men, a man of sorrows, 
familiar with suffering, one from whom, as it were, we averted our gaze, despised, for whom we had no regard. Yet ours were the suffering he was bearing, ours the sorrow he was carrying, while we thought of him as someone being punished and struck with affliction by God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, merciful God, you accepted the kindness shown to you by Veronica. We offer you the sacrifices and generosity of those who bring relief to orphans, to the elderly, to sick people and prisoners. Forgive us when we ignore our neighbors in need. Help us to be kind and compassionate. Amen. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Many bulls have surrounded me. Fierce bulls close me in. Against me they open wide their jaws like lions, rending and roaring. Like water I am poured out, disjointed are all my bones. Many dogs have surrounded me, a band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and feet and lay me in the dust of death. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Creator of heaven and earth, you accepted to experience the depth of human weakness. We bring to you the sufferings of all the exploited people who live in conditions unworthy of the children of God. We ask you to forgive us when we fail to recognize in those around us the children of the same Father. Amen. Jesus, as we sing you for him, we can hear your spirit calling, urging us to persevere. The Eighth Station Jesus consoles the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A large number of people followed Jesus, and women too, who mourned and lamented for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep rather for yourselves and for your children. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Saviour of all men, free us from blindness of mind and heart. Have pity on us when we reject your love or ignore your mercy. Help us to acknowledge our sins. Make us aware of the harm we do and the good we fail to do. Amen.
The ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I let you out of Egypt from slavery to freedom but you led your Saviour to the cross. For forty years I bore you up with manna in the desert, but you struck me down and scourged me. What more could I have done for you? Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who the shepherd sent to the lost sheep, you accepted to fall a third time, that we may always rise from our sins. We bring to you the sufferings of those who have fallen in guilt. Free them from despair and grant them the gift of repentance. All of us are in need of your pardon. Increase our hope in times of trial. Amen. Now three times we see your stumble. Let our human heart crumble. Make us put our trust in The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When the soldiers had finished crucifying Jesus, they took his clothing and divided it into four shares, one for each soldier. His undergarment was seamless, woven in one piece from neck to hem. So they said to one another, instead of tearing it, let us throw dice to decide who is to have it. In this way, the words of scripture were fulfilled. They divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothes. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, glory to the Father, you were mocked by the crowd. We offer you the sufferings of those who have been robbed of their dignity and those exploited for the sake of pleasure. Forgive us for any misbehavior or any excess in life. Do not allow us to be a cause of scandal for others. Amen. Lord, we strip our souls before you, so we humbly adore you. Take our sins and grant us grace. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Carrying his own cross, Jesus went out to the place of the skull, or as it is called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him with two others, one on either side, Jesus being in the middle. Pilate wrote out a notice and had it fixed to the cross. It ran, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, condemned to die as a slave, you were nailed to the cross. We bring to you the sufferings of the bedridden, who have abandoned all hope of recovery. Have mercy on all who suffer because of their crimes and misdeeds. Give strength to those who are tortured in their mind and body. Be with us when you are under pressure. Amen. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. With these words he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he gave praise to God and said, Truly, this was an upright man. And when all the crowds who had gathered for the spectacle saw what had happened, they went home beating their breasts. All his friends stood at a distance, so also did the women who had accompanied him from Galilee and seen all this happen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, you died on the cross that we may live. Together with you, we put all our lives in the hands of our loving Father. Change the hearts of those who do not care about salvation. Grant that our life and death be always a joyful acceptance of your will. Amen. The thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. All you that pass this way, look and see. Is any sorrow like the sorrow inflicted on me? My eyes are filled with weeping. My whole being is troubled, and my strength is poured out the earth as I behold the cruel death of my son. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, at the end of your life, you were placed in the arms of your mother. You have given her to us as our mother, placing us together with you in her arms. May she help us to understand the depth of your love, especially when we recall your passion and death. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Amen.
the 14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Joseph of Arimathea took the body, wrapped it in a clean shroud, and put it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a large stone across the entrance of the tomb and went away. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the world, through your death and resurrection, you offer to all people the gift of an unending life of love. Death is a passage towards the resurrection. Free us from fear and anxiety. Help us to see in each event of our daily life an occasion to love more and to prepare ourselves for the life in heaven. Let us die to ourselves in order to live with you. Amen. Christ is risen. Since you have been raised up to be with Christ, you must look for the things that are above, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on the things above, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died, and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, he is your life. You too will be revealed with him in glory. Lord, we know that all is not over as yet. We are on our way, and the journey will only be completed when we reach the end. Help us to remain faithful to you always, and to recognize you in other people on earth so that we may all reach you in glory beyond death. Amen. Let us now pray one Our Father, one Hail Mary, one Glory Be, for the Pope's intentions. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May He defend you from all evils and bring you to eternal life. And may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.
And so, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we would like to reflect on one of the stations. And I've chosen the station where Jesus falls the first time. Falling is a very human experience. We fall because of accidents and we bruise ourselves. Sometimes it is more serious. We even suffer from fracture. Or this fall can even cause death if we fall off a cliff. There are two types of experiences of falling, if you like. The negative type, when people express the falling as falling from fame or fortune, when we do something seriously wrong, through perhaps cheating or corruption or some immoral deeds. However, in this reflection, I would like to focus on the positive aspect of falling. We are reflecting on Jesus' fall when he carried his cross on the way to Calvary. The weight of the cross that Jesus carried was too heavy for him and the weight crushed him and he succumbed to the great weight of the cross and crushed to the ground. In doing so, Jesus reveals the fullness of his humanity, where even as the Son of God, fully human, the weight of the cross was too much for him to bear. He was weak from the scourging, and so now, as he carries the cross to Calvary, it was too much for him to bear. The main significance of this cross that Jesus is carrying is precisely because he is fulfilling the Father's will. Externally, the cross that Jesus is carrying is the instrument of shame through which a criminal is crucified in public, shamefully. And here Jesus was condemned to death for blasphemy in his proclamation that he is the Son of God. Externally, the cross is an instrument of cruel torture and shame. But at the depth of Jesus carrying the cross is the mystery of salvation. The reality of the cross then is the Savior of the Lord carrying the instrument of salvation with great dignity. If we reflect on this divine mystery, it reveals how the Son of God is determined to fulfill the Father's will. Jesus does not give up. He struggles to his feet and walks and struggles along to Calvary where he will be crucified. We know that as we experience the many challenges of our faith, for example, fidelity in marriage or fidelity as a priest or a religious, it is God's will that we remain faithful to our vocation. Or whatever challenges we may face in living the faith with fidelity, we are called to carry the cross. Sometimes the cross is overwhelming, but yet we know, like Jesus, we are called never to give up. Each time we fall, we are called to struggle to our feet and walk on as Jesus did. As faithful disciples of the Lord, we are called to be focused and determined to live the Father's will and never fear the cross as Jesus did not fear the cross. We are called to live our faith and our vocation with greater fidelity and in the process grow in the familiarity 
of Jesus by carrying our cross daily. You and I know how carrying the cross can be very challenging and often overwhelming. Yet because Jesus, our Saviour and Lord, has shown us the way of how to be faithful to the Lord, nothing is impossible. No crosses in life will crush us in so far as the cross we carry is our experience and our commitment to live the Father's will. We have just pondered on the stations of the cross from the time when Jesus is condemned to death to his crucifixion and resurrection. Let us remember that Jesus has shown us the way. Let us pray for that grace and wisdom to remain faithful to God's will at all times. Thank you. God bless you.